Hi everyone, this is a demo crash course in uh, the new Weather Underground plugin for Vox Commando. So I'll just fire up Vox here. And uh, first thing you'll need to do, obviously, is to uh, install the plugin. Uh, in future versions of Vox, that'll already come installed. But you can get the plugin on the website, on the forum. Then you need to go into your options, go to the plugins tab, and make sure that Wunder is selected. Once you've done that, you restart Vox Commando, go to your plugins tab, and double click on Wunder here. And this will bring up your Weather Underground plugin settings. Okay? So uh, the most important thing you need to do here is uh, have the location set for wherever you're at. If you use auto IP, it will um, choose a location near you, but not necessarily the best location for you. For example, uh, for me, this uh, will actually give me weather at the location of my ISP, which is in a city that's uh, 60 kilometers away. So for me, uh, one way to get a more accurate location is for me to enter my postal code. So you can do that if you're in Canada. And if you're in the States, you can enter zip code. Um, another way to do it would be to enter your latitude and long longitude coordinates using a comma. So you could, for example, Go to uh, maps.google.com and uh, browse to a location. So for me, just make sure you can all see this page properly. Um, Where are we? Morn Heights. All right. Oh, I'm somewhere around here. Oh, there's my house. Okay. If I go to this link button here, it actually gives me the coordinates. Oops. Oh, that's annoying. All right. This is what I want. This is my latitude and longitude. I can copy this and pop it right in there with a comma. And that'll give me the closest weather station. Um, another way to do it is for me to enter Canada slash St. Joliet, which is the nearest city that I know has um, a weather station, but it's not uh, the city that I live in. If I actually typed in Morn Heights, which is where I'm at, it won't work. So another way to do to figure this out uh, to get the most accurate station, and we may we may provide tools in a, an upcoming version, but Well, what you can do actually is just click on the icon here, which will take you to the Weather Underground site. And you can try, I'm going to use my postal code here. And you can see it's more in heights. And you can go station select. And you get this nice map. I can select this from the map, uh, click on Morn Heights again, eventually you'll see this ID comes up here. This is what they call a personal weather station. I don't know exactly what that means in terms of the data, but this is the closest 
registered location on their map and it uses this code iQuebec M27 okay so if you can follow those steps to get this code for your area using the weatherunderground.com then you're definitely going to get the closest location and you enter that one as PWS colon so that's personal weather station and then the code and then you can uh, immediately start clicking these test buttons to actually get your um, well you need to click save uh, click test and it will start giving you information All right so this is uh, giving me the weekday D0 weekday gives me today's weekday D1 weekday gives me tomorrow's and the station ID if I've done it if it's working properly should come back as this So you can see here, I'm getting Thursday, which is today, Friday, which is tomorrow, and the correct station ID. Okay, so now the question is, what do all these variables mean? And I'll blank this out, and I'll show you the simplest way to get a weather forecast with a minimum amount of work. Click on Pick Variables, and you get this nice box here and we can drag and drop our variables from here from any of these three boxes over into any of our format fields so in this case in the forecast field there's only a few things that we can select but this uh, FCT text stands for forecast text or forecast te text metric is actually a nice uh, synopsis of your weather and uh, the title gives us the time period so and you'll notice when I drop this here that there's a number sign we use this number sign to indicate which period we're talking about so I'll just do you a demo here T0 title and then I'll do uh, Put in a colon space and I'll change that number to a zero. So now we're getting a T0 forecast text metric. And I'll do a test. And you'll see we're getting Thursday, which is corresponds to T0 title. And then all of this clear high of 15 degrees, etc. etc corresponds to this T0 text metric. Now, one thing that I, I know is going to be confusing for some of you is the concept of this, what this number represents. And the reason it's confusing in particular is that if we're pulling items from this 10 day, 20 periods, we can choose a number uh, from zero to 19. And if we're choosing it from the data, we can only use a number from 0 to 9. And the reason for this is, I'll show you, if we're using the, te the text variables, well, I'll just show you the title that shows you the period we're talking about. T0 title and T1 title refer to today during the day and today at night. So when I test, you'll see we have T0 title is Thursday and T1 title is Thursday night. And then if we add two and three, this will be tomorrow and this will be tomorrow night. So Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night. 
Okay, now the data does not work that way. The data, we have more variables to pick from, but they only uh, correspond to a full day. So if we want to know how much snow that we're going to get today, we would use this. If we want to know how much snow we're going to get tomorrow, we would put a 1 there. And you can, again, I can demonstrate this by using the weekday fields. And you'll see that there's no day and night here. This is going to be Thursday. One is going to be Friday. Two is going to be Saturday. And three is going to be Sunday. Because today is Thursday. Okay? And obviously the current conditions, uh, again, we have a, a lot of variables. The current conditions um, obviously don't have a number associated with them because it's just current. So temperature Celsius, we don't have to enter a number. It's currently 12.3 degrees. Um, wind direction, and I believe this is the uh, direction that the wind is coming from. coming from the east-northeast. Um, a good one for the temperature will be the feels like. You'll notice that we have, uh, for the temperature, we have feels like C and feels like F. And you, you may wonder, well, why do we then have this metric or imperial option here? And uh, these what you choose here actually only affects uh, the variables on the 10-day forecast. Uh, so for example, uh, snow day, total snow for the day, let's say for tomorrow, in this case, it, it'll uh, automatically figure out for you if you're using metric, it'll give you snow in centimeters, and if you use imperial, it'll give you snow in inches. The wind, max wind, on the 10-day forecast, again, uh, it'll use miles per hour for imperial or kilometers per hour for metric, etc., etc. So um, we just, I just sort of automated it for these because the it was going to become these fields were going to start to get really long and uh, confusing. I thought I would wrap them all up using this uh, option. But on the other hand, uh, when you're doing your local conditions, well, I don't know, maybe you you like to use a um, metric system for temperature, but you still want to use miles per hour for your wind. Well, then you've got the option uh, for all of these in uh, current conditions. Okay, uh, I think that pretty much covers everything. On these uh, fields, you can put anything you want in. My original idea was that this would be uh, one for today, this would be one for tomorrow, but you don't have to use them that way. When you go to Vox, um, when you actually edit your command tree, and let's say, create uh, sample command here it's pretty pretty straightforward you can go here um, wonder get current okay and if you use the wonder get current command it'll use this format string for you or you could do uh, wonder get forecast okay and in that case it's expecting uh, a number here from one to three and that corresponds to 
uh, uh, sorry, a number from zero to three corresponds to which of these you wanted to use. So let me just uh, save options here. If I go to get forecast three, and then uh, use, um, I can try to use text to speech and hopefully it'll come through. Last result. See if you can hear this. Hi, this week, Thursday 15, Friday 14, Saturday 11, Sunday 16, Monday 14. Okay, um, another thing that you can do is you don't have to use these at all. You can use that. You could use the custom format command. So you could use uh, wonder get custom. And in that case, you put that format string here how you want it. And I'll just say high temperature, temp, high temps. And uh, instead of D0 weekday, I'll change this to today. And instead of D1 weekday, tomorrow. And then for the rest of the week, I'll leave the weekdays in. I'll do my test. High temps, today 15, tomorrow 14, Saturday 11, Sunday 16, Monday 14. And uh, it'll automatically refresh uh, any time that it detects that the weather hasn't been updated for within the last 15 minutes. As soon as you use any of these commands that go and get the information, or if you click on test, it'll check how long it's been since the weather was updated. It'll automatically refresh using this, whatever information you've got here. But if you change the, um, Well, changing the language isn't really going to work in this case because, well, maybe it will. I'm going to change it to French here. Save options. Okay. Well, the days of the week will be different now. High temps. Today, 15. Tomorrow, 14. Summer, 11. Limit, 16. Moon, 14. Yeah. Uh, you can't understand what she's saying. <laughs> I'll use the I'll use the test here. You'll see that the days of the week are in French: vendredi, samedi, dimanche, lundi. And uh, in the case of uh, if I use these text strings, you'll see that we're getting this all in French now. So if I want to get current weather text string in French test you see that we've got this all in French and if I change it to uh, Greek save oh well um, yeah sorry uh, you'll notice that the pause is a little bit longer uh, the first time after I've changed the language because it's actually having to refresh the information. Uh, I don't know if those symbols are being represented properly or not. Uh, this you'll have to get back to me on. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm assuming that there's no that I don't have the right Japanese font here for this to work. Sorry, you gotta save. Tests. Yeah, so I'm just getting squares. Um, but you know, any of the languages that use uh, regular character sets should work. I, French is really the only language I know enough of to, to verify. Save. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure you'll let me know and we'll fix it if we need to. Thanks for watching.